So you're binge watching The Great British Bake Off and you see this. Um, I was checking for a window pane stage to check whether the gluten is strengthened enough. Then you open Twitter and you see this. So what gives? Is gluten good or is gluten bad? Do you want it in your food or don't you? If you need an explanation, we've got your proof right here. Gluten isn't some monster that hides in your bread. It's a form of protein that you can find in wheat and its closest relatives. These wheat-adjacent grains have stuff similar to gluten that we sometimes call gluten as an umbrella term. Then these other grains are gluten-free. Gluteny proteins store energy to help baby wheat plants grow up big and strong, except that we come along and grind it into flour and eat it before they get a chance. In wheat, gluten is made up of glutenin and gliadin. Gliadin is stretchy, while glutenin is strong and snaps easily back into place. Like all proteins, glutenin and gliadin are made of amino acids, some of which contain sulfur. Sulfur atoms passing by each other can form covalent bonds which permanently link individual protein chains together. A stretchy and tough mesh starts to form when water is added to the flour. And because I have delusions of being the next Mary Berry, I made some bread to show you on a less molecular scale. Here you can see the glutenin and gliadin mesh that's formed. Those crisscrosses in the dough are thanks to gluten. So why is gluten so special to bakers? Because that protein mesh is important in the weird alchemical transformation of this to this to this. The yeast in bread dough produces carbon dioxide gas, which gets trapped in gluten's net and makes the dough rise. Without enough gluten, your bread will turn out tough and dense. When bakers and Mary Berry wannabes hold a bit of dough up to a light, they're looking to see if they can stretch it thin enough to see through it without it tearing. If they can, they know the dough has developed enough gluten. Here's ours, not ready, still not ready, and oh, finally. Yeah, that's enough kneading for me. So if gluten makes bread, you know, bready, why do people insist on going gluten-free? Is gluten bad for people? No, for most people it's totally fine. And if you put raisins in it, it's even healthy because they're fruit, right? But there are a small number of specific medical cases where gluten-free may be helpful. The first case is celiac disease. It's a serious medical condition that might affect as many as one in a hundred people in the United States, give or take a few depending on where your genes come from. People with celiac can't handle gluten from wheat, and when they eat it, their immune system freaks out and can send the person running for the bathroom. Celiac can cause long-term digestive harm and can prevent people from getting all the nutrients they need. People with celiac can try to eliminate as much gluten as possible, but trace amounts of the stuff show up everywhere, even in stuff like lip balm. The second case is wheat allergies, which are more common in children. People usually outgrow wheat allergies by age six or so, but those allergies can cause nasty reactions. Then there's non-celiac gluten sensitivity. This condition affects different people differently and doctors are still agreeing on exactly how to define it. It's all pretty up in the air, but the bottom line is some people feel better after they cut gluten from their diet. If you haven't been told by a doctor that you have a gluten problem, you probably don't need to worry about gluten just because it's trendy to do so. In the end, gluten is a protein that we digest for energy. Protein that happens to work a bit of magic in the oven to make lovely chewy bread. The bread turned out great, by the way. We'll toss the recipe in the video description. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll be leaving now, so we'll see you next time.